All right, so we are going to take a look at Socrative.com. So if you want to pop open your laptops while you're there, and if you want to go to just uh, Socrative.com, and you'll, you'll get to this page up here. You'll see uh, students and teacher. Super easy if you, have a, uh, if you have a Google email already. You just click uh, sign in with Google once you've got an account created. And um, it just signs you in automatically. You don't have to put any passwords as long as you're already logged into your Google. Google's actually the answer to everything, just so you know. I'm not sure if you guys have figured that out yet, but Google is the answer to everything. So, Socrative.com. So, 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 when you're your quizzes, you just go with Google. Google, Google. exactly. Google. <laughs> the biggest thing with Google is while well, the school board and the Department of Education totally commit to it or change their mind, because I, somebody gives them a yeah. Well, what, I'm, deal. what I'm showing you guys are some other options. I haven't really used Google Classroom yet. I, I want to get into that. I, I would have liked to go to the other workshop to see a little bit more about that. I was supposed to go to a, a, a full day conference on it and I just ended up not being able to get there. Um, but this one is something, again, another quick, easy one that you can use. It's got some advantages, disadvantages, um, for sure. But um, What's nice about this one is you don't, kids are on devices, but you don't need to have a projector up, okay? What they need is they need your classroom login. And you can see that I've created, when you, when you form your account, you've got to create a, a room number. So it's going to be unique to you, and a lot of them are, are, are taken already. So when you get to that student login page, if you just want to type in Stockdale 303, all caps, and then we can uh, get you on a quiz. So you've got a few, you can make a quiz, a quick question, an exit ticket, a space race. So I think we'll do the space race and uh, we'll try, try that one up there. So I'm not going to make you do my, uh, my fur trade quiz because it's like 30 questions long. Um, but they, this one was already put in here, a world facts quiz. So I'm going to set it up. It's like five questions. Uh, the space race you do with teams. So let's do, uh, let's do two teams. I'm going to auto assign teams. So I, I haven't uh, done this one yet. So I don't know exactly what's going to happen here. Um, I haven't done it this way. You can choose, you can do that just as a regular quiz, and I'll show you later. You can do it in a couple different styles for the quizzes. And, uh, you know, you can have a rocket, you can have a bear, bicycle, bee, unicorn, and I feel like, uh, you know, sometimes we're, things that we do are really mythical, so we'll go with uh, unicorns. <laughs> so you can hide right or wrong answers, okay? So, once you've joined my room, okay? It's a little slow. Yeah. Uh, can I ask you a quick question? Yeah, sure. With most of these things that you've shown us today, the boot and with the flickers and with this one, <laughs> yeah. um, if we get to the point where kind of it's a bring your own device school, yeah. the kids are able to access their Wi Fi with their iPhones, yeah. are, most, are most of these uh, programs set up so that you could use an iPhone or a Yep. Whatever. I have uh, I have Socrative on my phone, so I can actually from anywhere I can click on Socrative, I can log in and I can start a quiz and open up. So the thing is, you have to actually as a teacher, you have to be logged on. You have to actually start a quiz, so the kids can't just log on and choose a quiz to do. You have to actually open the room, and and then people can join in. Okay, so I'm gonna press start. So what what's your teacher login? On? What's that? Oh, uh, well, you, you want to join in as a student for right now. Oh, student. Yeah, so just type uh, Stockdale, uh, all caps, 303. Okay, so <coughs> once you're logged in there, don't, don't start answering questions yet. Sorry. Are you able to, have you been able to join? So I'm going to do a student login, Chris? Oh, you're still joining? Yeah. Student login. Yeah. Stockdale, 303. Yeah, so you can see my room number up there on the screen. Okay, yeah. But where do you find the login? Up top. Probably. Just click on student, student login. Student, student, student but login. how do you get to the page? Here, here, student login. Okay. Oh, you gotta go to Socratic.ca.com. So, so, so then it says, so Stockdale 303, is yep. that case sensitive, Chris? Or yes, it is, yeah. Okay, so you are. So all caps. Yeah. You can see the room number up there. I'm on the blue team. You're on the blue team. So it's going to randomly assign you a team. Uh, so maybe you, the blue team wants to get together, and uh, the magenta team. I'm not sure who chooses the colors, but blue and so magenta. Student login. 
Yeah, and then type in Stockdale 303. Oh, I got I was asking you a question. Yeah, don't, don't start answering yet. Yeah, team blue. Yeah, team blue, so you guys come. Go blue. So you may want to discuss your answers, so maybe you want to sit beside each other, maybe uh, quickly move yourselves around here. We're going to take down these. So like I said, this quiz was already made in there. I just I just used it because it was already there. Can you um, see my can you see the names of each other? I will be able to when I export the results. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So again, I, I don't have a naughty name uh, button on this one. So, so are you in? Maybe you want to start. Can we answer questions now? Or are you in Magenta? Are you on Team Magenta? Uh, yes. Okay. Are you joined in the team yet, uh, Wayne? Still waiting. Did log on. Take quiz. <clears throat> Just kind of froze on. Yeah. Screen screen. What the heck device is that? Yeah. 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 It's like Blue's Clues, you have Blue and Magenta. Yeah, well, why are you just trying to help them do that? Okay, so... Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to do this quiz and then we're going to do this quiz. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to do this quiz and then we're going to do this quiz. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to do this quiz and then we're going to do this quiz. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to do this quiz and then we're going to do this quiz. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to do this quiz and then we're going to do this quiz. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to do this quiz and then we're going to do this quiz. We both tried to respond. Yeah, that's a good question. I haven't done this one yet, so that's why we're experimenting here. Just respond, yeah, and we're, I want to see. I want to see what it comes to here. So again, you don't need this screen up here, right? Because the kids aren't seeing. It's just me seeing that on my computer, right? So that your questions are coming on your laptop, which is different from Kahoot, right? Kahoot, you saw the questions on the screen, and Plickers, you see the questions on the screen. Okay. So I believe you, you should all answer on your own. So you can see that on my screen, I'm seeing that people are starting to complete the questions. So you can see, uh, see what's going on here. Is speed important here in all kids, or is it just generic? Uh, that's a good question, too. We're going to find that because we're trying it out right now. I haven't used it for the space race, I've only used it for quizzes, and I'll go in and show you that in a minute. I think that is, that, that's just how much of the quiz you've completed, oh, okay. I think. It's not necessarily right or wrong answers. Oh, my, my, sorry. <laughs> sorry, my, my, okay. my power cord. Did work this time. Just, just, just shut it down. Sorry, right, he's got a team. Yeah. I, couldn't, I couldn't get it. I'm going to go up the other. Yeah. So, good job. Well, why don't you just wait till we're done, done this whole part? I think, actually, it's recently. Here, use the iPad. Or actually, I think it's recently. It's the same one. Yep. Okay, so has everyone answered all the questions? So, yeah, well, we did this team. Yeah. Can we each have to do it or can we do it as a I team? think you can each do it, yeah. Oh, okay. So you can see I've got five people in the group. Right. I can see that. So if we each do it, it will kind of put an amalgam of our. That's a, that's a question that I'm not sure about yet, and because uh, I'm doing this one as an experiment. I'm going to go in and show you what I have done with it. Okay. Um, Have you guys got all your results in there? Um, it looks like you have. One second. It, says you it, seem, it seems yeah. like you one, only one person needs to answer. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to finish. Yeah. I'm going to press finish. And then what you'll see up here, uh, get reports, view charge, uh, view, view charge, go to dashboard. So I'm going to click get reports. Okay. So I can get a whole class report. I can get an uh, individual student PDF. 
Um, I'm going to, again, you can save it in your Google Drive. You can email it to yourself. I'm just going to download it so we can open it up right away. And that should pop up here in a second. I believe. Not popping up. I don't see any at the bottom showing you. There, what we'll do, I'm not sure why that's not popping up, but we're going to go <coughs> to um, reports. And we just did that. So we've um, get report. So you can get back to it. Okay. So <coughs> do that. I'll put it in my uh, put it in my Google Drive. Okay, reports and add it to your Google Drive. So I've got my Google Drive up open right here. You can see that I have Sequoia <laughs> Brewster. <laughs> <Bruce. laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Oh, geez, so it, it creates a folder automatically for you called Sequoia Reports. Okay. So I'm gonna look for um, today's date here, nine ten right here. Okay. So you've got to kind of unzip it. Okay, so extract now. Okay, so I do get an individual report for each student. So let's open up this one and see what it looks like. Okay, so I have your quiz right here. Okay, so this was, um, it said on the quiz who it was, right? It said on the list. Yeah, yeah. go back to that. Okay, so yeah. let's go, go back to that. Student list. Stop the option of So someone didn't put in a name, maybe? So let's see what it says for, ch for choice now. Okay, so this one was safe. So put in your name. So I guess okay. maybe some of you didn't enter a name. I'm not sure. Um, but you can see you got four out of five. So and then from there, right, from Google, if you want it, right, um, you can share that and you could put the student's email in there and then you could send it right to them. I think it's a quiz. A quiz. Cool. So, um, so that's pretty nice. Um, now, when we look at Google Forms, I'll show you it's much easier because that'll be automated for you. Um, so that's a nice aspect of it too. So those guys, I, I'm experimenting on you. I haven't tried the Space Race one, but um, what we'll do is we'll go back to um, Socratic here, and I'm gonna go back to my dashboard, and I will, I'll go to manage my quizzes. So. Uh, my quiz is here. I've made uh, this one here. It's called Fur Trade. Uh, Fur Trade uh, multiple choice questions. So I can uh, show you that one here. So from here, I can do three types of quizzes. Okay? I can do a student paste with immediate feedback. So they answer the question. They find out if they're right or wrong straight away. Okay. So that would be good for formative assessment because they get their immediate feedback. You could also potentially use this for summative because if you do student paste but student navigation, that means they can go back and they can change their answers. Okay? So it gives them the ability to edit their answers. And again, if you want to do teacher paste so they can't get ahead of you, okay? So, um, Chef, you were talking about wanting to use it for something in your class. If you don't want to let them get ahead, you choose teacher pace, so you decide when they get to move to the next question, right? And um, so what, what I'm going to do is I'll get you guys to, uh, I'll do uh, immediate feedback. And don't worry about, the, like, you might not be able to answer my claim for trade uh, quiz. But just to show you what I see when they're going through, I'm going to start it, start this quiz. And I just want you to join the room again, and then you'll see what, what a teacher will see when, when people log in, right? So you see people, all the names populating, okay? Why are you stop yelling? <laughs> so, and we've got all the questions right here. So we've got all the questions right here. So as they go through this multiple choice quiz, and you know, it doesn't have to all be multiple choice. These questions down here are actually uh, short answer questions. So you can create, I'll go into like uh, how you create a quiz in a sec. And they don't have to be um, multiple choice or true and false. Now if they're multiple choice or true and false, 
you can put in, you put in the answers, it marks it for you, right? So if you want to take some questions like John is, you can see uh, they are taking some questions and right away they, um, I think I chose, uh, did I choose immediate feedback? I can't remember now, I think immediate feedback. So you find out you were wrong, right? It tells you right away. Okay, and then as they go through, you can see, I'm seeing all this information as people are going through it. Okay, so it's, uh, it, it's actually, I found it easier to put in questions than I did in Kahoot because there weren't as many restrictions about characters. Either, well, I'm not sure if there's a limit, but I didn't, I didn't reach the limit of anything. So it was easier for me to cut and paste. What, what it means is that students can work on their own. It's not like a big class, like the Kahoot is kind of loud and, you know, in your face a little bit, whereas this one, you kind of, um, you do it more on your own and at your own kind of space um, and, you know, you do it at your own pace. And you don't need a projector up there. I'm just putting the projector up because I wanted you guys to see what, what I'm seeing, right? I, mean, I can click on this, hide student responses, and then I, I hide them, right? And that's so if, if, it's, if a kid's coming by and you don't want them to see, but it just shows your progress. So this mark over here, this percentage, is actually progress, not how many they got right or wrong. I could switch that to scores, and then you see how they're doing, okay? So I can do that again. I'll just put it back to that. So there are other things. So I, from my, that's where you have to click on live results to see that, right? And I can see how many people are, um, when I'm done, it, it, there's a couple of little quirky things at the end that's going to say waiting for your teacher to do something when you've completed the quiz. I can't seem to figure out how to make that go away. So you can just, but after you're done, you can log out and it doesn't affect the results that you've passed on to me. Okay? So I, I have to finish it. So what I've done is I've, I've left it open. They were doing it as a quiz as part of a little assignment. So I left it open for the whole class. And as the class was going on, people would join, put in their answers. And at the end of the class, I pressed finish. And then I exported the results and saved them in my Google Drive. And then I, I went back and I opened them up later to get their marks up. And then I could enter them into Gradebook um, from there. So say if you started say this quiz partway through the class. Yeah. And could you continue it the next day? No, they'd have to, they, could, they could take it again. They'd have to take the whole, thing. Take the whole thing again. Um, yeah, so there has to be, uh, you have to give them enough time to make sure they can finish, right? You do, um, yeah, because you have, when you press finish, then that, that's it, and then the quiz is over. Um, but certainly they can take it as many times as they want, and all, all that gets happened is you get another report, you just archive that and put it into your, into your reports from different days. So I had a few students absent. So I got them to come in at lunchtime, and they took the quiz over lunch, and then the results are just saved in a, in a separate file. Okay, but they're still pretty easy to access as you go through, um, and we go from there. So you, don't, you, don't, you definitely don't have to take the whole quiz, but uh, that gives you an idea. Um, uh, And this one was a little bit longer, like I said, so. So question 26 is open-ended. Yeah. 26, 27, 20. And I put in answers. Yeah, I see, yeah, all right. Yeah. I, just want, I just put an A, B, and C, yeah. so I can see how yeah. they responded, and they gave, uh, they gave suggested answers. Yeah. yeah. So it, it will look for those keywords? I'm going to say yes. Okay. I'm not 100% sure. Okay. What I did when I marked this is I, 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 uh, I looked at the results and then I made sure I, I reviewed the, the short answer yeah. and s to see what they, um, what they decided was right or wrong and then I, I kind of adjusted my mark based on that. Mm -hmm. But in general, like, what it still does is it gathers everything into one place, right? So, you know, what, what I can do here is if, uh, if you don't, does ever, anyone really want to finish or can I just... Uh, just let John, we'll let John finish here, oh, and then I can export a, a report for you to look at. Okay, so I'll press finish. So basically, those of you who haven't finished, that's all right. We're, we're just playing around here. I'm going to finish. I'm going to get my reports. Okay. Uh, again, you can look at the whole class. Or you can look at the individuals. That's, um, that depends. And you can also do question specific. 
right? So that, that one was going to give you the, again, the information on what's working and what's not, right? Are there certain things that aren't going very well, like uh, in your instruction practices? So it does give you s some good options, whereas clickers, we know we can't get the individual students. We can only get individual questions okay, and not total results. Here it gives you a little bit, little bit more of an, of an option here. So I'm going to just, I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to turn that off, and I'm just going to do that, okay? So I'll put it back. We'll go back to my uh, X that out. We'll go back to Socrates. Where's my next one here? Maybe it's, oh, there it is. I think it just went short up there, didn't it? So there's John's, John's results right here, okay, and then we're here to answers. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's, that part's pretty easy, right? Does it give a summative, like, so, does it give a... Um, it gives you a mark up the top, right? But is, it, is that mark, okay, sorry, yeah. Yeah. So how did that, can we scroll down to see how that incorporated my, uh, yeah, open-ended? Yeah, okay, let me go back, I'm on the wrong ones here. I think I might have, uh, let me go back to Google Drive here. There we go. So, what for? So I did eight. Now why did it do it like that? That's weird there. Huh. This is one of the pages. Yeah, there's the rest. Question right. number eight was, was looked weird. Yeah, I'm not sure. I've never seen it do that. I'm not sure why it's saving it like that. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's a separate page. I don't know. That's yeah. Good question. Yeah. I don't know why it's saving it like that. Maybe I clicked on a different uh, setting by accident. Yeah, we want to see the, um, the uh, independent answer. Right there. Yeah, so we'll go here. Examples. That's, I've never seen it do anything like this, so I'm not sure exactly why it's doing. So there, the two reasons why. So you have Castor, Gra, Gold. So it doesn't look like it's actually marked those. Okay. okay. Right? So I think those would be up to you to, to give a mark to. I think it's going to be, uh, I really don't know why it's done that. These, these things, again, like they're... You know, they're free online apps, right? So they're not, they're not perfect, but I've never seen it do that. Uh, all my reports have come out like just as a PDF and pretty straightforward. So I, I'm, I maybe I clicked on something weird um, when we did that. But, it, but certainly the information is there. I mean, it's all, all saved in there. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it's pretty easy to find. So what I'll do now, if I can find where I was here, go back to Socrata. So let's go to manage my quizzes, and I can just show you quickly. You can import a quiz, but it has to be set up in an Excel template. So there is a template here that you can fill out. So you can put in your questions, you can put in your answers, and then you can import it. I'm not sure what the benefit of doing that would be um, instead of entering it directly except if you already had something made in Excel, but right. I, I, I doubt any of us do. So um, we'll go back here. So you can create a quiz, type in a name. Okay. Okay, if I want to share it, you can share it to other teachers and things like that. So then it gives you your choice of question. Do I want a multiple choice, a true, false, a short answer? So we can create a multiple choice here. I'll put in some things. You can uh, have in whatever you want in here. Okay, your answers. You, you click on which one you want to be the right answer. Formatting. Okay, it can give you, again, if you want to do, if you're doing science, which we don't need that stuff, right? We don't use that stuff. So I'll just turn that back off. Um, and then you can add an explanation underneath. Okay, so if you're going to do this, this, the, the paste one, right. where they get the, right, the, the answers right away, you can give some information in there, add that underneath. I didn't do that in the first quiz that I, uh, that I tried. And then again, so I want to do a short answer question next. Okay, when I put in my short answer, I can add my explanation. Okay, uh, you can add okay, correct answers, optional, those are optional. Um, true and false, it sets you up. 
Yes, yeah. So I, I'm trying to go ahead because I haven't I, I haven't put anything in here, right? So it wants me to put some stuff in here. So let's say now we've got true and false, and you can see it's just um, ordered in. But if you want to change the order of a question, okay, I believe you can use the arrows here. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, that's not letting me do that right now. Maybe I need to edit it. Maybe to shift the Okay. Let's save. Let me use this first. Choose what you want. Okay. And yeah, save and exit to your clues save. Let's go to manage my quizzes. My quizzes. Let's go to this one. Should probably get in there to edit it. Edit. Okay. So then you can get back into an edit if you're not finished. But I should be able to, there we go. I don't know why that wouldn't work before. So if I want to move a question down. Okay, so you can move things around. Um, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty easy to do. Okay, great, get your quiz in there. Um, there are other things you can do, like a quick question. Okay, those are really, really easy to do. You can do a uh, an exit ticket. Okay, so set up an exit ticket. They answer a couple questions. So if you want to just do a quick thing and populate a. Uh, a report for you if they're on maybe the end of the class. You want to see what they got out of the class, see what they understand of the material, exit ticket, they fill that out. It goes goes to you. You can do a quick little read and you know do are they showing an understanding of what we're talking about. Okay, so it's just a way to collect it all together. I'm gonna to show you another way in a sec though, because um, using Google Forms, I think you guys did a little on Google Apps, but there's a couple things. I don't think you guys really got into Google Forms, did you? Okay, so that's mostly Socrative. Um, you know, again, like, like I said, this is, this is all kind of new to me. I've tried a bunch of these things. So you kind of got to get in and play around a little bit and, um, and see how they work. You know, do they work for you? And, um, but I, I, find them, I find that they work pretty, pretty well. So Chris, right? So you're looking at Kahoot yeah. and Flickers yeah. and Socrative. Yeah. Uh, clearly, the flickers is different than that you don't need a device in the hands of yeah. the kid. So, rather than Kahoot, you need a device in these kids' hands. Yes, you don't need a projector for Socrative unless you're doing the space race and you want to show the uh, the little uh, the little things going on right, so there. Yeah. So, the, so I, was, I was trying to get things. Yeah. The Kahoot is more based upon. Uh, you, you, it's kind of like flickers with a, a machine. Yeah. You need you're you're looking at a common screen. Yeah. You're sharing this. This can be done at a student's pace. It's yeah. almost like um, you know you're writing uh, some some uh, international exam. You go at a certain time. It's there. Just yeah. Your, at your own pace. Yeah. As long as the classroom is open, they don't even have to be in the classroom with you. Right. Right. You could be in sitting in the classroom. They could be in another classroom as long as they have a device and they know they uh, they know what your your classroom number right. number right. is. So right. So. Or you have to, do you have do you have to set it? So in other words, if you said if you set this quiz up for them, right. Mm -hmm. uh, and instead of doing it as a sort of a formative in class, you said yeah. it as a formative at home. So, so tonight there's a quiz up there. Uh, can can you leave your classroom open? You should home? be able to do that. Yeah, from home you should be able to do it. You can do it from your phone. I've start, I've set up the quizzes and started it from my phone. So here's what I did. I, I used it for that fur trade quiz. Yeah. So I made uh, this is on my my website. Uh, I I put up uh, this assignment. Yeah. I kind of did my fur trade web quiz. I did it all online with a little click button in yeah. here. And then at the end they had to do a Socratic quiz. So I put in the link there, I put in my, my number, and then during the two classes that we were working on, at some point during those two classes, I opened, uh, for the whole classes, I opened the quiz, and I said, you have to complete this quiz either this during this time or this time. And they all went online, they all did the quizzes, I got the results, and um, from, you know, and I, so I included this as a summative because I did, I did it as student pace and allowed them to edit it. So I didn't use this as a formative. I would say probably I would use it um, more as formative than summative, but but you certainly could use it as, as formative. So that, that part's pretty easy to do, though. Yeah. Um, you know, so yeah, in, in theory, yeah, if you told them, you know, tonight you got to go online. Now, the only thing I'm going to say is, does everyone have access to internet and devices at home to be able to do that sort of thing? So you'd, 
you'd want to kind of suss that out before you, that was your, your plan, but in theory, yeah, absolutely. You could, you could log on and, and, and as long as they have your classroom number, right? So I had to give them my classroom number um, and tell them where to go. Right. So um, maybe I will, so I, as part of the course, I put together a little website here, right? So um, I'm gonna go into my resource depot and this is all stuff on formative assessment technology. So if you want to go back, I'll give you guys this address, yes. Kahoot, Clicker, Socrative. There's a great page here on Socrative um, that, that kind of, I didn't make this one up, but I've got a few videos here on, on all of them. I've got a few videos on how to do it. Um, this, this website here was, um, you know, put together 13 ways to use Socrative as a formative assessment. So I didn't reinvent the wheel. I just linked you up to this page. So if you want to see how else it could be used, um, this is a pretty a pretty good one to uh, to look at. Um, so Google Apps for Education, right? Um, yeah. So you guys did a little bit on this. So what did what did you guys talk about in that one? Like what did she uh, go over with you guys? It was just a brief overview on getting to the main page. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. So why don't I um, go to Google okay, and I'll show you kind of. Um, so when you, if you have a Google account, you know, you'll probably recognize this, I'm logged in already, so you can click on this little thing here, and um, you know, you've got a few places that you can go, get to your Google Drive, so, yeah, is that Google, um, Google.com Google or CAA or whatever, okay, okay, I'm where you are, okay, so if you're logged in, then, then you, you can get into these things, your own versions of these, so, Again, you've got uh, you know your docs and your forms and all these things, and then you can click on even more from Google, and it's going to go down here. So what I found was pretty cool was um, Google Forms. Okay, so essentially it's kind of like a, a survey thing, but it really can operate as a little bit of a, a test. Okay, so when I click on Google Forms, okay. Now I have a series of, I have some questions. Okay. Can you just go down for one second? Yeah. So you went, when you pulled down all those icons, yeah. after you signed in, you went to? Okay, I'll go back. No, oh, sorry, okay. sorry. So, so right, there, right, right here. Yeah. So Google Forms doesn't show up right here. Right. Okay. So click on more and then even more. And then there's everything that you can do in okay, Google, sure. right? Okay. So I scrolled down here. But what you can do is you can actually add that to your tab up there. And I, I, I'm not sure why I haven't done that. Um, I can't remember how to do that right off the But I don't know. So you can click on it from here. But you can get that added up into your tabs. So from there, I can do all sorts of little things, right? I can make a multiple choice question, OK? I can say, uh, you know, what well, doesn't really matter what I, what I put in there, okay? I'll just put a, a bunch of stuff here, and then I can put in my options, okay? I can add another one. Once I enter, you see it gives me other options. So I'm, I'm basically creating like a, like a form. And, and you know what, Chef, it's kind of interesting. They, they, this is like, people do this for like menus and things like this, for order forms. So it could be used in a whole bunch of different applications. Um, it doesn't have to be just for formative assessment, right? People use them for their weddings, like they use them for all sorts of things, but it's, it's a pretty neat little, little affair. Um, and what I'm going to do is maybe after, after this, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll turn the video off for a few minutes and we'll, uh, if you want to try to make one, you, I can come around and help you guys. But I'll show you a couple that I've, uh, that I've already made. Um, and uh, it's pretty... Uh, Kind of funky here. Let me go back to my website. So on my contact form, so what I did is I built one into here. Okay. So this is a, this is a Google form. So you enter your name, you enter your contact info, and you can provide feedback. So what I'm actually going to use this for is not only for like for my website that I made because I had to do it, but I can use this actually as an exit ticket right here. So my students can put their name in, put their email in. And then I can ask them to leave me a comment. So as soon as they do that and submit it, I get an email that tells me they have submitted something. And their answer is going to go into a spreadsheet. 
So then I can print out those spreadsheets and I can see. So if I use it as an exit ticket, I can actually have their little, their little blurb that they put in there about whatever we're talking about. Let's say it's uh, you know, the, the land route, uh, uh, you know, how people got here. You know, tell me what you know about the land route. And then they can say that in there, type it in there. I'm going to get an email that they submitted it so I know to go check it. I'm going to get a form, a, a spreadsheet that has everyone's answers in it, everyone, all, the, all the feedback they've given. And that, that's just, like, that takes five minutes to do. Okay? So I did something a little bit more formal uh, here. Okay, and what I did is I made a little quiz. Okay, so using Google Forms, using Google Forms as well. So what I did is um, I'm going to put in my name. I'm going to take the form. I'm going to take the test. Okay, and then I'm going to show you what I can do with that. Okay, so let's say I'm in, in block A. Okay. Aboriginal people by the time you're in plant science. Okay, how to sign you use the method of planting with three sisters and it was uh, corns, bean, and squash. Okay, advanced understanding of pain layers and the bark of, I'm going to get this one wrong. Okay, I'm going to put maple, oak trees. Okay, Aboriginal, basis for Aboriginal trade was to become wealthy. I'm getting that one wrong too. Here there's a list. So here you can choose more than one answer. Okay, so Canoe, okay, dog sled, travois, okay, kayak, umiak. So those are all things you can pick more than one answer. Here I did a true and false. Okay, I believe they were superior to nature, that's false. Okay. Aboriginal people measured wealth not by material wealth but by spiritual powers. That's true. There was another list one, sorry. Basis of the trade is to acquire anything. There we go. Okay. So I'm gonna submit that. What I can do is that I then go to my Google Drive. So when, when you know people have taken your quiz, I should get an email notification. Let me check on my phone here. See if it's uh, come in yet. You can set up your, your quiz so you'll get an email notification. That some, so, any, so this one, any, people can take it any time. Okay? So you could send them home with this one and you don't have to be logged into anything. They just have to know where your site is. So I told the kids how to get to my website. They got onto my website, they took the quiz, okay? So I put in a little note here, okay, that says, great job, your results will be emailed to you, 